Hello guys, good evening. Can you hear me? So last class we discussed the relation of KP and KC, isn't it? Yeah, so we discussed about relation of KP and KC. I think uh, yeah, most of you have joined. Yes, so uh, yeah, so the unit of KP and KC also we have discussed, no? Unit of KP and KC. Okay, so last class we were here, we stopped at this. Um, we discussed law of mass action, and then we'll see the equilibrium constant constant pressure is equals to the equilibrium constant at, at uh, no, in terms of pressure, in terms of concentration, RT to the power delta N. Okay, so if you look at the unit of KP and KC here. Unit for KP, it is atmospheric because we have pressure to the power delta N. And KC is concentration to the power delta N. Concentration is mole per liter to the power delta N. Okay. We also discussed at, depending upon the value of delta N, what would be the relation of KP and KC? All these things we have discussed. Okay. Yeah, Shada, tell me. Yes, yes, yes. Mole per liter. Also, you can write molar. That is the molarity. That's fine. Not a problem. You can write. Okay. We also say no concentration two molar, three molar. So that's fine. Not a problem. Okay. Next, you see. 
the characteristics of of kp and kc of kp and kc point wise you write down the first point here equilibrium constant and when i say equilibrium constant means we are talking about kp kc both okay equilibrium constant does not depend on depend on the initial concentration initial concentration and the amount of amount of reactant and product expression of of case kp and kc is only applicable at equilibrium can write only when the equilibrium is achieved third point the equilibrium constant constant for a reversed reaction for a reversed reaction is reciprocal is reciprocal of the equilibrium constant of the original reaction original means the forward one copy down these points yeah now look at this example for this point suppose we have a reaction h2 plus i2 gives 2 hi kc for this reaction is concentration of hi square concentration of h2 and i2 now if you reverse this reaction and the reaction would be this 2 hi gives h2 plus i2 so for this reaction kc dash if you see this would be concentration of h2 concentration of i2 by hi square So if you look at the relation between the two, if you compare this, 
this expression and this expression if you compare right what we get here we get kc is equals to 1 by kc dash so what we say when we reverse a reaction the equilibrium constant also get reversed okay that's the point copy I2 gives 2 HI. We know its equilibrium constant is Kc. Now, what happens if you multiply this number by this reaction by any number? Suppose 2 by multiplying it. We have 2 H2 plus 2 I2 gives 4 HI. So, what would be the Kc dash for this reaction? The Kc dash would be. H I to the power four divided by H two square and I two square, which is nothing but K C square. Okay, so in this case, the new equilibrium constant I have given you third point, right? Three point I have given in total, Shraddha. The last one was this only. Equilibrium constant of a reverse reaction is reciprocal of the equilibrium constant of the original reaction. Yeah, this is under that only we are discussing. One more example we are discussing under this. Equilibrium constant K C dash is equals to K C square. So any reaction, if you multiply by any number, two, half, four, whatever it is. the new equilibrium constant right is equals to the old one the previous equilibrium constant the original reaction to the power the number with which you have multiplied the equation clear yeah oh yeah i'm going back one second okay okay so we are done with this now another one you see in this one the another point in this suppose we have two reactions right two reactions we have suppose a gives b and c gives d for this one the equilibrium constant is k1 and for this one the equilibrium constant is k2 if you add the two reaction what happens which means we'll get a plus c gives b plus d right so for this one when we add the two reaction the new reaction the equilibrium constant kc would be concentration of b into concentration of d concentration of a into concentration of c if you find out the expression of k1 k1 would be b by a and k2 would be d by c
d by c. Okay. So if you take the ratio here, you see b by a is nothing but k1, d by c is nothing but k2. So the new equilibrium constant equals to the product of the equilibrium constant of the reaction that we have added. Okay. Done. Okay. Similarly, what happens if subtract the two? Okay. So when you subtract the two reaction, you see This would be A minus C, B minus D, okay? Which we can also write, this equation we can also write, A plus D gives B plus C, right? So, the Kc for this reaction would be concentration of B by A, that is K1, concentration of C by D, that is 1 by K2. So Kc is equals to what? K1 into 1 by K2. So it is something like you have reversed the first reaction, the second reaction, and then added with the first one. This two, three properties you must remember, plus you also keep this in mind that equilibrium constant depends only upon temperature as to if the temperature is constant, equilibrium constant won't change. Okay. Yeah, the next thing you see, heading right down, predicting the the extent of of reaction mostly it is a factual thing okay you should uh, know a, a few things into this there's two condition we have nothing much that you need to keep in mind okay not that important also okay so for any reaction what we have in this for any reaction if kc value is greater than 10 to the power 3, right? Generally what happens if Kc increases, the tendency will be more in forward direction. The reaction has more tendency to go in forward direction. More value of Kc, more forward reaction will be. Okay, from how, like, how did we get this value? That is experimental, we don't have to bother about it, right? So if Kc value is more than 1000, then what we say, obviously the reaction moves in forward direction. Towards forward direction, right? And the position of equilibrium, position of 
equilibrium lies towards the product. So basically, it is shifted towards the product side, equilibrium position. If Kc is less than 10 to the power minus 3, the value is extremely small, then the reaction goes in backward direction. And the position of equilibrium towards the reactant, just opposite. If Kc value lies in this range, more than 10 to the power minus 3 and less than 10 to the power 3. And the reaction can go in forward or backward direction depending on on the conditions. This is the two, three points you need to memorize. Okay. Yeah. Next, you write down the application of equilibrium constant. application of equilibrium constant. Let us assume a reaction first. And the reaction is A plus B gives C plus D. This is the reaction we have. See, whether the equilibrium is achieved or not, we can always find out the concentration of product by the concentration of reactant. This ratio we can always find out whether it is equilibrium or not. Okay, A, B starts reacting, converts into product. This ratio we can always find out at any point of time. This ratio is called reaction quotient. This ratio is called reaction quotient when time T is equals to is not equals to T equilibrium. When T is not equals to T equilibrium, means that when the equilibrium is not achieved, the ratio is called, the ratio is called reaction quotient. The ratio is called reaction quotient. Okay. What happens at T is equals to T equilibrium? Means when the equilibrium achieved, right, this Q becomes Kc, the equilibrium constant. So equilibrium constant is nothing but the reaction quotient. And it is also defined as the ratio of product by reactant as we know
but the only condition is what this ratio this concentration of a b c d will take at or when the equilibrium is achieved t is equal to t equilibrium no doubt in this so basically at t is equal to t equilibrium k becomes kc and that is nothing but the equilibrium constant okay that's one thing now suppose if i represent this reaction on the scale where initially we have uh, the reactant here a plus b and then finally we have the product c plus d and somewhere in between we have the equilibrium condition t equilibrium so at this point you see at this point the ratio of c and d is said kc equilibrium constant and at any other point other than this t equilibrium at any point right this ratio is what this ratio is said to be what q reaction quotient or qc also sometimes we write this is also q so basically ratio of product by reactant at any point other than equilibrium point is called reaction quotient okay this is what the meaning we have here now when we have the reaction equilibrium is achieved and if you disturbs the equilibrium condition like suppose if you add some reactant into that or you increase the pressure or anything is there if you disturb the equilibrium or we can say if the equilibrium is not is not achieved then we have two things possible here suppose at any point of time the q is coming out to be here at this point right so reaction always has tendency to go towards equilibrium state so if this q is here right then the condition is what we can write then the condition we have here first condition is q is less than kc if q is less than kc which is somewhere on the left side of this equilibrium constant here suppose what i said that reaction always has tendency to go towards the equilibrium state so this has tendency to go towards the equilibrium state hence forward reaction is possible here right so when q is less than kc the reaction will go in forward direction any doubt in this second point if q is greater than kc then we have backward reaction possible and when q is equals to kc that is the case of equilibrium okay done now based on this you try this question the question is we have a reaction given give c plus d assume the total volume is 1 liter it is given is 1 liter okay and at any point of time the number of moles of a is 1 mole b is 1 mole c is 1 mole and d is 1 mole 
the question is find the equilibrium constant find the equilibrium constant uh once again find the molar concentration sorry find the concentration of a concentration of b concentration of c and concentration of d right concentration of a b c d at equilibrium this we need to find out if the kc value is given first question first question the kc is 1 the kc is uh, 100 and kc is 0.1 for this three different data of kc you need to find out the equilibrium constant of uh, concentration of a b c d try this then yes volume is given volume is 1 liter yeah volume means the reaction in which the reaction uh, the vessel in which the reaction is taking place the volume is 1 liter for that Okay, did you get it? Okay, see what we have to do in this one. Um, uh, see here. Try to understand this. Yeah, sure. Okay, for sure. 
It's just, I mean, it's actually, it's a more kind of situation now in our project. Okay, we daily meetings. Actually, it's a more kind of situation in my project now. That's why I'm a bit concerned that you know, I have a degree, but I need to ask my manager first. Okay. Okay, this is the reaction we have. Now you see, first of yeah, all. I'm actually in my project now, there's this in production, something is happening. So we are jointly debugging. This is the number of moles given. That right? Volume is one liter given. It means mole is nothing but the concentration here. We can assume. Because since volume is one liter, mole is nothing but the concentration. Tomorrow, if possible, I'll give it a Friday. Okay, mole is equals to the concentration we can take. No, no, um, my preference is Friday. Okay, first of all, you see, this is the number of moles given. We do not know at what stage this reaction is. Sure, sure. Means at this point of time, Actually, we do not have any idea whether this reaction will go in forward direction or in backward direction. We don't have this info. So how do we know that, first of all? Right? So we do not know whether it is the equilibrium state or not. So if you find out the ratio of the product and reactant, this ratio is what? Could you tell me? Okay, so what is this ratio? No, it's not KC. That's what I'm telling you. Let's not, you know, go into this data. Try to understand the question first. Okay. Yes, molarity is concentration, but since volume is one, so concentration is mole per liter, right? Volume is one liter, so mole is nothing but the concentration you can consider. Understood? Prakul? Yeah. Okay. So this value you let it be. This value you let it be. What is this KC value is given? Let's first try and understand this. This ratio, since it is not mentioned that this mole is the number of moles at equilibrium, so this ratio we can check, we can say it is the reaction quotient, isn't it? Now we do not know whether it is at equilibrium or not. This value is at equilibrium or not. So this ratio definitely we can say it is an it is a reaction quotient, isn't it? Yes or no? Please type in. Correct? Okay. So if we know the value of Kc. And KC, we compare with this Q because Q to we can find out easily. Mole is given one, which is nothing but the concentration. So it is one into one divided by one into one, which is one. So if you know the value of KC, KC we can compare with Q and depending upon the relation, whether it is equal to Q, greater than Q or less than Q, we can say whether the reaction is at equilibrium or it will go towards the product side or towards the reactant side. Can we say that? Yeah. Right? So for a given data here, A, B, C, D, we got the value of key Q, which is one, and the action quotient is one. Now you look at this question. The first question is given Kc equals to one. And Q we have already calculated equals to one. This means what? Kc equals to Q. This condition means what? Could you tell me? What do you mean by this condition? This condition means the reaction is at is at equilibrium, right? So whatever the concentration given, number of moles given, that would be 
the equilibrium concentration of reactant and product and that is what we need to find out did you get this so we can compare this with q and kc and we can say whether we have forward or backward reaction and we can do this isn't it first one you understood Okay, so this is the first case we have. Now, the second question we have here is for the second one, the KC value is given. Is it 100 or 0 0.01? Could you tell me the second value? Oh, just let me go back. KC, the second value is given 100, okay? So this value is 100, okay? Q we already know. So for the given value of Q, we can say KC, sorry, KC is greater than Q. Okay, KC is greater than Q. Okay, now when KC is greater than Q, could you tell me forward or backward reaction favored? Forward or backward in the, under this condition? Forward reaction, okay. So we concluded this thing that we have the forward reaction. Now we see what we'll do. We have the forward reaction. So we know that the direction of reaction now. Initially, we did not know. When the question was given, we were not sure that whether the reaction will go in forward or backward direction. Now we understood this. That is what the application of KC. We can compare the value of KC and Q and we can say whether the forward or backward reaction is there. So what happens when the reaction goes in forward direction? You see, we have A plus B. And it is given one, 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 one mole, right? Forward reaction means what? The concentration of A and B decreases. So we assume A and B reacts X mole and forms X moles of C and D. One plus X, one plus X and the equilibrium is achieved. So this is what happens to achieve equilibrium. This reaction takes place. Did you understand this? No, it's not. From one, it was one, right, initially. And then A and B is reacting. So obviously here, it would be one minus X. Out of one, X mole reacted. That's what we are assuming. Complete reaction won't be there, no. So you can assume a number. Suppose you can assume here it's Y. Y is equals to one minus X, that you can say. Okay, but we'll write like this. Out of one mole, X mole reacts. So one minus X left, one minus X left, one plus X forms, one plus X forms, and the reaction maintains the equilibrium condition here in this uh, situation, right? So what we can write here, you see, the KC expression would be what? Can we write KC for this reaction would be one plus X by one minus X square, is it clear? C into D by A into B, one plus X, one plus X, one minus X, one minus X. 
okay this value is given in the question 100 could you find out the value of x from this to find out the value of x you substitute it here you'll get the concentration of a b c and d that is the equilibrium concentration yes got it tell me the answer here No, 9 you won't get. Ah, 9 by 11 is fine. So x equals to 9 by 11 you will get. So what is the concentration of A, B, C, D at equilibrium, you see? The concentration of A, because this is what we need to find out, equals to B at equilibrium. And that would be 1 minus 9 by 11, which is 2 by 11. Concentration of C into is equals to the concentration of D 1 plus 9 by 11, that would be 20 by 11. This is the answer for your question. Now, could you tell me for the third, third one, when Kc is equals to 0 0.01? Try this one. Yes. What is the value you are getting? Again, you, you'll say what? Q is equals to one we have. That is given in the question. So we have Q is greater than KC. So under this condition, we have backward direction reaction. Backward reaction possible. So A plus B gives C plus D one mole, one mole, one mole, one mole. Backward reaction is going on, right? So C and D will react. So it is one minus X, one minus X. This would be one plus X, one plus X. Then you substitute the value of KC. Expression of KC would be one minus X by one plus X square. So one minus X by one plus X equals to one by 10, so X value would be what? Again, nine by 11. X value is nine by 11. So concentration of A equals to B, A equals to B equals to one plus nine by 11, that is 20 by 11 concentration of C equals to concentration of D is equals to two by 11. This is the answer we have here. How many of you understood this? Is it clear? No doubt. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now you see we have types of equilibrium. Just the definition you need to know here. Types of equilibrium. The first one is homogeneous.
homogeneous equilibrium. This is the equilibrium in which in which all reactant and product all reactant and product are in the same phase means we have only one phase okay either solid or liquid or gas only one phase same phase reaction okay for example you see suppose we have s2 gas plus i2 gas converts into 2 hi gas all our gaseous phase reaction so this equilibrium is homogeneous equilibrium and just opposite we have the next one that is heterogeneous so equilibrium in which more than one phase more than one phase is present that is heterogeneous equilibrium suppose we have cacio3 it is a solid and when it dissociates it forms cao solid plus co2 gas two different phase we have so heterogeneous equilibrium okay this two types of equilibrium this definition is required here not important uh, mostly we'll discuss with uh, you know a homogeneous equilibrium so this definition is required over here now there is one important term we need to understand that is degree of dissociation degree of dissociation that is alpha it is represented by alpha how do we define degree of dissociation it is defined as the number of moles number of moles reacted per unit mole per unit mole of the reactant given mathematically if i write down alpha degree of dissociation equals to number of number of moles reacted divided by the number of moles initially taken number of moles initially taken okay you see here suppose i have a reaction i am assuming a gives b plus c the reaction is at time t is equals to 0 the
the concentration of a i am assuming or number of moles i am assuming a 0 0 at time t is equals to t equilibrium when a starts converting into b and c x moles of a reacts x moles of b forms and x moles of c forms okay so degree of dissociation of dissociation alpha is equals to how many moles reacted x how many moles initially taken a so alpha is equals to x by a so x equals to what we can write a times alpha okay a times alpha so if i write down the expression of kc here for this reaction it would be uh, again concentration of b into c divided by a volume i am assuming as 1 i am assuming this volume just to make you understand in the question whatever volume is given you need to take the ratio of mole and volume so that you can write down the concentration because we know concentration is mole per liter okay so concentration of b is x which is a alpha so i'll write down here a alpha into a alpha divided by a into 1 minus alpha so kc equilibrium constant equals to a alpha square by 1 minus alpha this is the formula we get in terms of equilibrium constant in terms of degree of dissociation okay see this one the question is the equilibrium concentration of a b c in a reaction and what is that reaction the reaction is 3a plus b gives c plus d 2c i'm sorry 2c plus d r 0.03 respectively respectively calculate the initial concentration of a and b try this
Dan. Once again, guys. Okay. Tell me. Anyone got the answer? See, how do we do this? Uh, one thing you must, <coughs> excuse me. One thing you must take care of here. The reaction is of uh, 3A plus B gives 2C plus D. Okay. So initial concentration is not given. I am assuming it as A and this is B because that is what we need to find out. We don't know whether it has equal concentration or not. I'm assuming it has A and B. And there's not like it's not mentioned that any product is present initially. So C and D will have zero. At time T is equals to T equilibrium, we can assume that out of A mole, X mole of A reacts. So how many moles of B reacts? Could you tell me? If X moles of A reacts, then how many moles of B reacts? X by three, very good. So X by three moles of B reacts. How many moles of C forms? How many moles of C forms? Two X by three, two X by three. And this is X by three, isn't it? Right, how do we do this? You see three moles of A reacts with one mole of B. So one mole reacts one by three, X reacts with X by three. So out of B, X by three has been reacted. Similarly, what we can say, three moles of A gives two moles of C. So one mole gives two by three moles of C. So X moles gives two by three into X moles of C. Right? Similarly for D we can write. Okay, but I won't suggest you that you assume it like this. Okay, you can do it like this way, this way also. You will get the same answer. Answer is not wrong, but it's better to consider this. I'll tell you what. It's better to con consider 3x instead of x. What I'm telling you, you, are, you have assumed x mole reacts. I'm telling you, whatever the coefficient we have, that into x you assume this amount reacts then what is the benefit of this instead of x we have 3x so everywhere we'll have 3x only here also instead of x we have three times x here also we have 3x now the advantage of this is what you see this 3 and 3 will get cancelled 3 and 3 will get cancelled and 3 and 3 will get cancelled Point I'm trying to make 
if you consider this as now you just listen this leave it this you see over here a moles we have initially and the amount that reacts is three times into x this is for a then for b it would be b minus it is three so three x so it is one so x it is two so two x it is one so x so this data is easier to write and easier to calculate also so i would suggest that consider data like this did you understand this depends upon the isometric coefficient anyone any doubt in this tell me because this is what you need to do in this chapter okay this is the only thing which which you need to write first and then you can you know go with the other steps to solve numericals okay so whatever the coefficient is given in balanced equation that into x you have to assume everywhere okay so here what i am going to do i am assuming this as this is the number of moles of a b c d obviously one liter you need to assume here at equilibrium so what is given in the question now you see it's very easy to do what is given in the question in the question it is mentioned that at equilibrium concentration of abc is this so we have a minus 3x equals to what 0.03 b minus x equals to what 0.01 2x equals to what 0.008 to find out x from this you always have the data like this so that you can find out x because we have three variables no a b and x three equations right find out x substitute here you'll get a and b and that will be your answer any doubt in this easy could you please respond all of you tell me the value of a and b So a value, okay. I am. Oh, you are getting different answers. Acha. So, is this the answer you got? Yeah, I think this is the answer. so you should know how to write down the expression of kc by assuming this x or 3x whatever let me tell you again if you assume this also it is not wrong okay you can easily you'll get the right answer from this whatever you want you can assume okay whatever you want you can assume but this is easier you don't have to calculate all this whatever the coefficient is given 3x x 2x x finish yeah okay now some more uh, you know expression we'll try to find out suppose we have a reaction 2a plus 3b gives 4c plus 5d okay T is equals to zero. The initial moles is given. It is A, B, zero, and zero. This is given. You need to find out the expression of Kc for this. It is the number of moles we have and volume we are assuming one liter again. 
find out the expression of kz assume like that only x or whatever and try to find out the expression just a second i'm coming try this Yes. Okay. So what I'll write down here, I'm assuming at time t is equals to t equilibrium. At time t is equals to t equilibrium. 2x moles of A reacts. So here we have 3x. 2 gives 4. So 2x gives again 4x and 5x, nothing you have to think. Whatever the coefficient with x you write down, finish. Kc would be equal to concentration of C to the power four. So four x to the power four, concentration of D to the power five, five x to the power five, concentration of A to the power two, so A minus two x to the power two, and b minus 3x to the power 3. This is what the expression we have. So 4 to the power 4 into 5 to the power 5 into x to the power 9 divided by a minus 2x square b minus 3x cube. Okay. If suppose v volume is given, then the concentration would be this divided by V, divided by V, V and V. You need to divide it by V. Okay, this question you try. One mole of nitrogen is mixed with three mole of hydrogen, three mole of hydrogen in a four liter container. in a four liter container, if 25% of N2 
converted into into ammonia by the reaction n2 plus 3h2 gives 2nh3 calculate kc and its unit Once again, Suti, I'll go back. Yeah, copy this. Try this one. Then what is the answer? See, how do we do this? The reaction is given. N2 plus 3H2 gives 2NH3. Okay, are you getting 1.6? Anyone? What is the answer you're getting? Tell me. Okay. See, the question is, we have one mole of N2. Initially, we have taken one mole of N2 and three mole of H2. We don't have any product, so it is zero initially. Right, when the reaction proceeds, 25% of N2 converts into ammonia. So whenever it is given into percentage, no, it is alpha actually. 25 by 100, it is 0.25 alpha. It means out of one, 0.25 has been reacted, degree of dissociation. So one minus 0 0.25, 3 minus 3 into 0 0.25 and 2 into 0 0.25 forms. Any doubt in this? This is 0 0.75. This is 0 0.75, 3 minus 0 0.75, 2.25. 2 and this is 0 0.50. Okay. 
So 0.75, I'll write down this in um, other way. It is the value we have three by four, 2.25 and five point this we have. So this is point, this is three by four we can write. And this one would be 2.25 by 100. So we can write this as um, nine by four, right? And this one would be one by two. But this is the number of moles. It is not the concentration. So what would be the concentration here? The concentration would be three by four into four in the denominator mole per liter, four liter is the volume here it is given, you see, in four liter container. So we need to divide this by four. So nine by four into four, one by two into four. Then write down the expression for Kc. Kc expression would be NH3 concentration is square and two, H2 concentration Q. Substitute all the values. NS3 concentration is one by eight square. N2 is um, three by four, so three by 16. And this is uh, nine by 16. Q. This is the answer you will get. In this term, if you write down, you'll get the answer as four to the power five divided by three to the power seven something. Okay. Okay. This is the answer we have. Got it? We'll do some more questions on this. You will understand how to you know, find out all these things. Okay. Apart from this, if you see the formula of degree of dissociation alpha, right? And that is X by A, that's initial concentration, total initial concentration. But if these two things are not given, then also we can find out alpha by this formula. This formula just you need to memorize. alpha. It is given as alpha is equals to capital D minus a small d n minus one into d, where this capital D is the vapor density. If vapor density is given, you can directly use this. Vapor density, when there is no dissociation, that is important, means initial, no dissociation. Initial vapor density. Vapor density, the small d is the observed vapor density. When the reaction is start after some time at equilibrium, whatever the density given, observed vapor density is this D. N is the total number of products. Keep that in mind. Total number of products. We'll do some questions on this also, you'll understand. So if the reaction is this, A gives N B. This N we have over here. This N we have over here. Okay. In this only, if you multiply by 2, 2D two by 2 is small d, N minus 1 into 2D, then this 2D, it becomes the molecular mass, observed molecular mass into M. Capital M write down, it is the molecular mass, 
when there is no dissociation, a small m is the observed molecular mass. Observed molecular mass, small m. So sometimes in terms of molecular mass, also the data is given. You can use this formula to find out alpha. Okay. One more formula we have in this, the least important one is alpha is equals to, we have T1 P2 minus T2 P1 divided by T2 P1, where this T1 and P1 are the initial constant, uh, sorry, initial temperature and pressure. P2, T2 is a final temperature and pressure. So these three formula also you can use to find out alpha. Copy this down. It is N minus N into M multiplied by, not divided by. This one is multiplied. See exactly this, the same formula we have. Instead of capital D, write on capital M, small d, write on small m. That is it. 